Hello, this is Angelia with today's wisdom. Today's wisdom comes from Daily Ohm, shedding light on ourselves, parts that don't want to heal. In almost every case, we know what is best for us in our lives. From the relationships we create to the food we eat. And that's because we live in ourselves. We've been living in ourselves all along. Most people know there are people who don't and they need a little bit of help, a little coaching and things. Um, you know, we know what fits us usually. Um, now, then relationships, sometimes there needs to be a little help. Um, <coughs> I know what I like, but some other people might not know what they like. Um, and, you know, based on parents um, and relationships you've seen growing up, you might not know how to have a good and fair relationship. Um, so that might be something, you know, you might need to go with your partner to couples counseling or whatever to get that figured out. Um, and food we eat, okay, some of us, you know, sometimes we like food that's not good for us and we know it. And we do it anyway because we're, you know, either celebrating or unhappy and we want that to make us feel better, you know, comfort food, but it usually doesn't. <laughs> Still, somewhat mysteriously, it is often difficult to make the right choices for ourselves. Um, and that's usually because there's a part of us who really doesn't want to make the right choices for ourselves. Um, and that goes back to self-esteem and, you know, self-worth, usually. We find ourselves hanging out with someone who leaves us feeling drained. Um, and I've done that. Um, and there came a point in my life where I just couldn't do that anymore. And I just started, you know, uh, trying to prune the deadwood, so to speak. Try to not be mean about it. But it's like, hey, you're not enriching my life in any way. And not only that, but we're not enjoying time together in any way. You're draining me. You're filling my life with negative you know, energy, and so that needs to stop. Uh, and you're well within your right to do that if someone is making you feel that way. I'm choosing to eat fast food over a salad. And of course, we know the reason on that. Fast food tastes better. <laughs> you know, you're eating that chicken sandwich with cheese and bacon uh, with some onion rings on the side. That's tasting a lot better than that salad. <laughs> we know that's a thing. You just, it's called willpower. And we have to exercise it. You know, and sometimes it's harder than other times. We go through phases where we stop doing yoga or taking vitamins. Um, and, you know, some people, I guess, do. Um, I personally enjoy yoga and I do it every Tuesday. Um, and uh, I do take my vitamins. Even though we feel so much better when we do. Often we have no idea why we continue to make the less enlightened choice. But it is important that we inquire into ourselves to find out. And again, usually it goes back to self-esteem and self-worth. When we choose that which is not best for us, the truth can be that there is a deep-seated part of us that does not want to heal. Um, and you might say, well, that's crazy. Everybody would want. Well, some people's self-worth is so low that they don't think they're worthy of healing. Um, these people's psyche was damaged so hard as a child that something has been ingrained in them to feel that they are unworthy of their own healing. And that's sad. Um, and if you have that problem, then you should definitely go talk to somebody about it. Because everybody is worthy of their own healing. We may say it's because we don't have the time or the energy or the resources uh, but the real truth is that when we don't take care of ourselves, we are falling prey to self-sabotage. And we all do that to one degree or another. Um, we make impulsive choices. We do something that we're not quite sure about. Um, you know, and uh, there are people who self-sabotage themselves on a regular basis. Um, and again, that goes back to their sense of self-worth. They're afraid to be happy. They're afraid to be successful because they don't feel like they deserve it. <coughs> Self-sabotage happens unconsciously, which is why it's so difficult to see that we are doing it. Um, like I said, you might be repeating patterns and not even realize it, uh, not even realize what you're doing to yourself. The important thing is to realize that this very part of us that resists our healing 
is the part that most needs our attention and love. Um, and there are people who are just like that, dead set in their ways, and there are reasons for that. Um, and if you're that way of being is hurting you um, and not allowing you to heal, then that is a problem, and that's something you need to deal with. <clears throat> Even as it appears to be working against us, if we can simply bring it into the light of our consciousness, it can become our greatest ally. Um, and again, um, you have to realize that there's a problem before you take care of a problem. Um, and like I said, some people are so, keep them blinders on, they don't want to know, they don't want to see, they're just keeping, you know, moving forward, don't want to know what's going on in the peripheral or what happened back there that they didn't deal with. And then they just never deal with it and then it becomes a big blockage in their life um and that's sad it carries the information we need to move to the next level excuse me in our healing process um because if you study psychology or buddhism uh you learn that every problem needs to be solved for you to move on um and every bad situation that happened to you, you have to deal with it. You have to process it, um, overcome it, purge it um, in order to move on. Um, and if you don't, then it sits there. It festers. Like I said, you got to take your garbage out. Um, and then you end up messed up. So <clears throat> when we recognize that we are not making healthy choices, we might even say out loud, I am not taking care of myself, um, and that's just a reminder to you that you're not. <laughs> Sometimes this is a jolt we need to wake up to what is actually happening, um, and it could be, you know, uh, maladaptive behavior, it could be an addiction, it could be, you know, you just want some emotional comfort from things that are not meant to give you emotional comfort. <clears throat> Next, we can sit ourselves down in meditation with a journal or with a trusted friend to explore the matter more thoroughly. Um, and, you know, uh, I recommend journaling. It it's, helps you to learn about yourself and see what's inside of you. Um, because sometimes we're so busy in our day, we never see that. You know, we don't know who we are. I know people who have gotten to a ripe old age and still have no idea who they are as a person. They just did their life, you know, did taking care of the kids, working, whatever. And then suddenly they have time on their hands and they're like, who am I? I have no idea. And that's, that's a shame. Just shining light of our awareness on the source of our resistance is sometimes enough to dispel its power. <clears throat> Anything you're resisting... It's out of fear. So, you know, anytime you feel some resistance, you know, there's some fear there. Now, a lot of times that's healthy. You know, fight or flight, you know, the resistance is the getting ready to flee. <laughs> um, but it also can cause problems in your lives. And then we talk about, you know, psychology coping mechanisms, maladaptive behaviors. And at one point that helped you to survive and deal with the situation, but then later in life, it's no longer as effective and it can actually cause you problems in your life. At other times, further effort is required. Um, and like I say, don't, don't be ashamed to go talk to somebody about your mental or emotional health. There's no shame in it. We all have a life. We've all had problems. Um, and if something, you know, you're not the smartest person in the world. Oh, did I surprise you? You're not. <laughs> And sometimes we can't figure it out on our own. We need some prompting. We need some help. Um, and, you know, it's just okay. Either way, we need not fear these parts that do not want to heal. Um, because they keep coming up. They're reminding you they're there. Like I said, you know, when people repress, uh, they only press for a certain time. And then I hear, you know, like some people out in the world... Uh, say, oh, well, if that really happened to them when they were a kid, they wouldn't have waited till they were X amount of old. Okay, um, 
there's this thing called repression. And once the thing stops happening to you, you put it away. You forget about it. Um, and then, like I say, your brain waits until it thinks you're ready to process these things and says, oh, okay, you're just sitting here, you know, watching TV, having a cup of tea. But now I think you're ready to deal with this thing that happened to you when you were, you know, nine years old. So we're going to bring it back up. <laughs> and then you're suddenly like, oh, my God. Is this real? And you're like, yes, this is real. I remember this. Um, and then you're like, how did I ever forget this? And the simple reason is your brain didn't want to deal with it. Your brain came from a bad situation into a good situation or a better situation. So it put it away. It was done. It repressed it. Um, so when these things come forward, they're prompting you to heal. They're prompting you to deal with it. It's like, hey, we've had this on the back burner for a while. It's time to deal with it now. <clears throat> We only need to take them under our wing and bring them with us into the light. Um, and, you know, uh, in the Bible it says, you know, everything done in darkness will be brought into the light. Um, and that's a good policy, uh, you know, for us and our psyche as well. So, you know, um, when uh, we have parts that don't seem to want to heal, um, we can shed light on that part of ourselves. Um, in order to heal it. Think about it. That's all for now.